Argal by Ellie Conway. The story begins in the desolate expanse of southeastern Siberia, where a luxurious golden train cuts through the frozen landscape. Inside, Vasily Fedorov, a self-made billionaire and aspiring politician, and his wife Irina, daughter of the current Russian president, travel towards Moscow. Fedorov, formerly known as Christopher Clay, was abandoned as a baby in Siberia and adopted by Americans. Despite his wealth and fluency in Russian, he remains an outsider, striving to prove his Russian identity and gain the people's trust. He plans to achieve this by fulfilling a bold promise to recover the legendary Amber Room, a priceless treasure stolen by the Nazis during World War II and lost ever since. Fedorov's ambition stems not just from patriotism, but from a deep-seated need to fill the void left by his traumatic past, marked by rejection from both his birth parents and his adoptive family. He seeks to rewrite his own narrative by becoming a hero of Russia, reclaiming a lost treasure that symbolizes the nation's suffering and resilience. His obsession with the Amber Room becomes a means of achieving redemption and solidifying his place in Russian history. Meanwhile, in the jungles of the Golden Triangle in Southeast Asia, Aubrey Argal, a young man with a mysterious past, ekes out a living as a tour guide. Haunted by the unsolved murder of his parents, who were secretly involved in the drug trade, Argyle roams the treacherous landscape seeking answers. Argyle is intelligent and multilingual, having spent his childhood traveling the world with his parents, but he feels adrift and disconnected, unable to move on from the trauma of their deaths and the revelation of their double lives. He seeks solace in the familiar landscapes of his childhood, hoping to piece together the truth about their lives and deaths, and perhaps find a sense of closure. He grapples with the conflicting emotions of love and resentment towards his parents, struggling to reconcile their idealistic beliefs with their involvement in a dangerous and illicit trade. He stumbles upon a downed DEA plane shot down by the notorious Sam Gore cartel and, against his better judgment, risks his life to save the surviving agents. His act of bravery, driven by a deep-seated sense of justice and a desire to break free from his own inertia, attracts the attention of the CIA, specifically Francis Coffey, the organization's chief operating officer. Coffey, a shrewd and determined woman who rose through the ranks despite being an outsider herself, sees potential in Argyle. He is recruited and undergoes intensive training, joining a special operations group, SOAP, led by the tough and experienced Woody Wyatt. The team is still reeling from a betrayal during a mission in Iran, where one of their own, Glenn Dabrowski, was seemingly caught selling secrets to the Russians. This betrayal has created an atmosphere of suspicion and resentment within the team, and Argyll, with his unconventional background and minimal training, faces an uphill battle to earn their trust. He clashes with Wyatt, who views him as an unwelcome replacement for his close friend Dabrowski, and struggles to connect with his other teammates, who remain wary of his motives and loyalties. His outsider status, combined with his innate distrust of authority, makes it difficult for him to fully integrate into the team and embrace the CIA's culture of secrecy and obedience. The team's first mission involves stealing the Bracelet of Fidelity from Irina Fedorova, a jewel Fedorov believes holds a clue to the Amber Room's location. Argyle and his partner Aaron Quinn, posing as a wealthy couple, infiltrate a high society ball in Monaco. Their elaborate charade, requiring them to learn ballroom dancing and immerse themselves in the world of the ultra-rich, pushes Argyle out of his comfort zone and forces him to confront his own discomfort with wealth and privilege. He grapples with the moral ambiguity of their mission, questioning the justification for stealing from individuals, even those as ruthless and corrupt as the Fedorovs. However, their plan goes awry when Irina decides to wear the bracelet instead of putting it on display. Improvising, they induce a seizure in Irina, exploiting her rare condition and escape with the bracelet, replacing it with a convincing fake. Fedorov, undeterred and increasingly desperate, learns of a second bracelet, the Bracelet of Piety, located in a remote monastery on Mount Athos in Greece. The team embarks on a daring mission to steal it, parachuting onto the secluded peninsula and infiltrating the heavily guarded monastery during a sacred ceremony. 
the mission pushes the team to their physical and mental limits, navigating treacherous terrain and facing the constant threat of discovery. They must confront their own beliefs and biases as they infiltrate a community devoted to faith and tradition. They succeed, but at a heavy cost. Asif Samra, the team's engineer and a beloved family man, is killed during their escape from pursuing Russian forces. Argil, deeply affected by Samra's death, discovers a bullet lodged in Samra's Quran, seemingly identical to those used by his own team, and begins to suspect that the traitor might still be among them. He keeps his discovery to himself, further isolating himself from his teammates and fueling his distrust. The team eventually discovers that the two bracelets, when joined, form the Bracelet of Concordia, containing a star map pointing to the Chateau de Fontainebleau in France. Investigating further, they learn of Rudolf Naumann, a Nazi art historian obsessed with both the Amber Room and a beautiful French actress, Nathalie Schaber. He secretly transported the Amber Room to Fontainebleau to impress Schaber and later hid it somewhere else before being recalled to Germany. His actions, driven by both obsession and madness, shed light on the lengths to which individuals will go to possess beauty and power, regardless of the consequences. The team's research into Nauman's life and his connection to Schabert exposes the dark underbelly of wartime Europe, where personal desires and political agendas intertwined to create a climate of exploitation and violence. Following a lead from Henri Dumas's journal, a former prisoner at Fontainebleau, the team discovers a map hidden behind the walls of his cell, leading them to the Tatra Mountains in Poland. They believe the Amber Room might be hidden within a network of tunnels and caverns used by the Nazis during the war. As they make their way to the mountains, a fierce storm disrupts their plans and delays their arrival, giving the pursuing Russians a chance to catch up. The storm, a powerful force of nature mirrors the escalating conflict between the CIA team and the Russians, adding to the sense of urgency and danger. It also serves as a metaphor for the chaos and uncertainty that surrounds the search for the Amber Room, a treasure shrouded in mystery and myth. The team eventually locates a hidden entrance to a vast underground complex, guarded by a pressure-release landmine and a series of heavily fortified doors adorned with Nazi insignia. Inside, they find evidence of the horrors inflicted upon the prisoners forced to build the tunnels, and discover a hidden train filled with looted treasures and the bodies of Nazi officers seemingly killed by their own comrades to ensure secrecy. The discovery of the underground complex and the remnants of Nazi atrocities serves as a stark reminder of the dark history of World War II and the enduring legacy of human cruelty and greed. The team is forced to confront the reality of war and the devastating consequences of unchecked power, questioning their own role in perpetuating violence and pursuing a treasure that may be cursed. Reaching the end of the train, they find a collection of crates stamped with Königsberg, believing they have finally found the Amber Room. However, before they can celebrate, Russian forces attack, killing several team members and capturing Hooper and Wyatt. Argyle, wounded and alone, witnesses Aaron Quinn's betrayal as she joins Fedorov and reveals herself to be the mole. Quinn confesses that she was forced to cooperate with the Russians after they captured her father, a former CIA agent presumed dead in Iraq. Desperate to save him, she agreed to provide information in exchange for his release. However, Denisov reveals that her father died two days earlier, shattering Quinn's hopes and exposing the depths of the Russians' cruelty. Devastated and realizing the extent of her actions, Quinn throws a grenade into the crate containing the Amber Room, causing a massive explosion that destroys the treasure and kills Fedorov. This act of self-sacrifice, born from grief and remorse, finally reveals the truth about her father's fate and exposes the depths of the CIA's betrayal, forcing Argyle and the others to confront the complexities of loyalty, duty, and the consequences of their actions. It also raises questions about the true value of the Amber Room, a treasure that has caused so much suffering and ultimately led to Quinn's tragic demise. In the ensuing chaos, Argyle escapes the collapsing cavern with the help of Carter, carrying a wounded Washington. They emerge from the mountains as the sole survivors of the mission, forever marked by the losses they have endured and the horrors they have witnessed. Their survival, 
against all odds, represents a glimmer of hope amidst the darkness, suggesting that even in the face of immense tragedy and betrayal, resilience and the human spirit can prevail. Back in the US, the team gathers at Harvey Point to mourn their fallen comrades. Coffee acknowledges the agency's failings regarding Quinn's father and expresses understanding for her desperate actions. She reveals that Jared Quinn, Aaron's father, was abandoned by his commanding officer during a chaotic ambush in Iraq. Believing him to be dead, the agency covered up the truth to protect his family. However, Quinn was later captured by the Iraqis and handed over to the Russians, who used him as leverage against his daughter. This revelation exposes the dark underbelly of the intelligence world, where individuals are sacrificed and families are left in the dark for the sake of national security and political expediency. It also raises questions about the ethical boundaries of intelligence agencies and the potential for abuse of power. Dabrowski, cleared of all charges, is reunited with his family, leaving the CIA to focus on his personal life. His experience as the scapegoat, ostracized and vilified by his own colleagues and family, has left him disillusioned and determined to prioritize his loved ones. He recognizes the importance of human connection and the fragility of trust, choosing to rebuild his life outside the world of secrets and deception. His departure from the agency represents a rejection of the clandestine world and a return to normalcy suggesting that there is life beyond the shadows of espionage and intrigue. The mission might have failed to recover the Amber Room, but it successfully eliminates the threat posed by Fedorov and exposes the traitor. Argyll, despite his losses and the lingering pain of his past, finds a sense of belonging with the remaining members of the team, forging an unlikely bond with Wyatt and Carter. He has learned to confront his fears and act decisively, while also recognizing the importance of trust and loyalty. He has begun to heal from the trauma of his past and embrace a new identity as a valuable member of the CIA, finding purpose and camaraderie within the organization that initially seemed so alien to him. The story ends with Irina Fedorova, now a widow, announcing her candidacy for the Russian presidency, capitalizing on the public's sympathy and admiration for her late husband's efforts to recover the Amber Room. She burns the last remaining piece of Fedorov's past, a scrap of fabric from the blanket in which he was found as a baby, signifying her own rise to power and a new chapter in Russia's political landscape. This act also reveals the depths of her ambition and her willingness to exploit her husband's legacy for personal gain. She embodies the ruthless pragmatism and cunning that characterize the Russian political elite, suggesting that despite Fedorov's demise, the pursuit of power and influence will continue, and Russia's future remains uncertain. Coffee, meanwhile, continues her work at the CIA, recruiting and training new operatives, ever vigilant against the threats facing the world. She reflects on the complexities of her role, the delicate balance between protecting national security and upholding ethical principles. She grapples with the knowledge that her decisions have far-reaching consequences, impacting not only the lives of her team, but the fate of nations. She is haunted by the ghosts of past missions, the sacrifices made by those under her command, and the ever-present possibility of failure. Yet she remains dedicated to her cause, driven by a sense of duty and a belief in the importance of her work. The destruction of the Amber Room, a symbol of beauty and cultural heritage, represents the devastating consequences of war, greed, and the relentless pursuit of power. It serves as a reminder of the fragility of human life and the enduring legacy of human conflict. The loss of the treasure also symbolizes the futility of Fedorov's quest for redemption and the destructive nature of his ambition. Argyle and his remaining teammates, having witnessed the horrors of both the past and the present, are left to grapple with the question of whether their actions can truly make a difference in a world where darkness and violence seem to prevail. They must confront the moral complexities of their work and the constant struggle between good and evil, searching for meaning and purpose amidst the chaos. If you enjoyed this audio summary, please consider liking this video and subscribing to get notified when we post our next summary.